Hello and welcome to the YouTube podcast series of Cities ABC and Open Business Council, Fashion ABC and Dennis Guala. So I'm Hilton Super, the Vice Chairman of Student Group, and today we're interviewing James Soames and Mark Notton of Watch. This is where we interview people that are changing the world, people who are inspiring us with their achievements and their creativity, acumen with the use of technology. Now, in previous interviews, Dennis Guada and I have interviewed some amazing people, 250 of them in, in particular, and achieved more than 14 million views on YouTube. Now, this interview series on Cities ABC is in partnership with our platforms, openbusinesscouncil.org, which are Web3 and 4IR-based platforms utilizing technology that employs the use of truth and trust through the unique corporate digital identity using blockchain and deployment of data analytics, data analytics, AI, and machine learning. Now, today I'd like to introduce you to James Soames and Mark Norton, Nick Watch. Welcome, James and Mark, to our podcast on Nick Watch, which offers both the fun that kids crave and the security where care caregivers and parents can safeguard children's budding freedom with location tracking, communication tools, games, and apps. So they never have to filter content. So welcome, James and Mark. Morning. Hello. Thanks, Hello. This is a really, really exciting development. I'm really, really um, um, want to know a little bit more about Nick Watch. So tell us a little bit more about the genesis of Nick Watch. How did, I mean, the two of you have got some amazing careers in mobile technology and wearables, et cetera, et cetera. But what was the thing that made you focus on this opportunity? Mark, do you want to take this one? Yeah, so I'll, I'll give you a little bit of background. It's been a, it's been an exciting product and one that's been developed over the last few years. So, um, so Paramount uh, Studios they uh, obviously own all the rights to all of this great content um, that they uh, have on Nickelodeon Channel, and they wanted to find another way to interact with um, uh, their target audience that not wasn't necessarily having them being in front of a TV, but having them be more out and about and more active. Um, and a few years ago, the, they uh, decided upon having a, a kid's watch, which will enable a kid to stay connected, be engaged with the um, characters and, and more importantly, get out there and, and get active. Um, and that development has been uh, over the last couple of years working on getting the best in class hardware, getting the, all of the, the right software platform, getting all the characters in there, the user experience, a lot of testing with kids, a lot of testing with parents to make sure that the experience was the best in class because there, there's a number of kids watches that are available on the market but they felt that like they really didn't give it the whole rounded package that it was needed for that proper top range kids watch experience um, and uh, yeah happy to say that we uh, we brought that product to market earlier this year and, and launched it in April and it's just been crazy busy um, ever since they're getting getting the message out and introducing both uh, parents, caregivers and kids into what a real kids watch experience could be. I mean, one of the key things about, you know, any, any form of technology and the way in which technology interacts with the people um, that we, we love the most, which is, is our children, is that there's always issues to do with, are they spending too much on front of the TV? Are they spending too much time in front of you know a console or whatever so tell us a little bit more why is the watch the nick watch so different i think the key thing is you know as mark said this has been kind of designed with kids in mind if you look at some of the other devices that are out there on the market effectively they're kind of raiding the parts bin of kind of adult watches and maybe one embellishes them with pink or blue to make them feel a little bit more junior but Ultimately, this device has been, you know, the culmination of years of focus groups and research and has been built with kids in mind. And it's not just the hardware, it's the software and the experiences. So um, what, what kind of sets this apart is the fact that this is not about just playing Minecraft or Candy Crush on a wrist based computer, but it's actually all about imaginative play and it's about inspiring kids to get up off of their chairs and to actually jump about and be kids and enjoy being kids. Um, I, I remember when I was first uh, introduced to this product back in February and um, my children are a little bit older than the target audience, which is kind of bit, kids between five and 10 years old. But to see her 
uh, pulling yoga poses and standing on her head, um, you know, it can't help but raise a smile from the uh, most serious of cynics. Um, and so what we found um, in our engagement with influencers and product testers and parents is they love the fact that kids are on their feet and jumping around and having fun, as opposed to sitting in a darkened room on yet another screen. Mm -hmm. um, and the kind of the, the fun um, element, which you, um, you know, articulated at the start of the session is only part of the story because what's also absolutely critical is the fact that parents have control. They have control as to whom uh, the child interacts with, because this is a device where you can actually make and receive calls using an, an IoT SIM, and this, this can take place on a global basis. Um, but it's also a walled garden as well. So there's no access to, um, you know, social media. We all know um, you're a couple of clicks away from bad stuff on the internet as well. So having that reassurance that your child is not going to be exposed to anything that will not be detrimental to their development would be great. All of this is Nick content, whether it's SpongeBob, Loud House, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, it's all baked into the experience and that's really what sets us apart. It's very interesting in, in terms of the, the, the demographic that you're looking at, which was a yeah, five to teenager um, years. Five to 10. Yeah, five to 10, yeah. Mm -hmm. Why is it that you looked at that very, very, very specific demographic? Is that just because it's the Nick, Nickelodeon demographic? Yeah, I think that, you know, the Nickelodeon characters the ones, the, the ones that we're talking about, SpongeBob, you know, some of the most iconic animated characters out there and beloved mm. characters, you know, they hold appeal, not just with kids of that age, but also parents. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know about yourself, but I've spent many, many hours, um, you know, a few years back watching SpongeBob and various uh, iterations of that. And I don't know how many episodes were produced, but I don't believe I ever saw the same one more than once. Um, and kids love it. They're absolutely entranced by all of the characters. Um, in the UK, we re recently undertook a partnership with uh, the SpongeBob musical, um, which is, you know, it's, it's, it's had a Broadway run and it's now moved uh, to the UK um, where, it, where it will, you know, expose the SpongeBob uh, universe to over 200,000 people between now and start of September. And what's really interesting is the cross section of people who attend these shows. And yes, of course, it's our bullseye audience, but it's also the parents and the carers as well. So if you like, the, the appeal of the Nick characters both absolutely targets the, the you know, the, the kids, the five to 10 year old age group, but also you've got that reassurance and engagement from the adults who were once kids themselves, let's not forget. We can all confess to um, being engaged and watching the odd, you know, the odd huh. SpongeBob um, episodes because I do find them quite engaging, even, you know, even in my, my, in my, my gray years. <laughs> <laughs> you, was, you were about to say something, so I cut you there. Yeah, it, it also, the, the age group also links in with um, the age that children start to gain a little more independence. So they're, they're gonna go to school, they're gonna be away from their parent um, for a period of time. So it also plays into that to sort of desire and the need for the parents to feel reassured that they can access that child in an emergency. They can see that they are safe where they're meant to be. If they do wander off, they can call them. If the child needs to get in contact with the parent or caregiver, they can do that, even though they're not physically in the same environment. Mm -hmm. so I think that's another really important bit. And then, how, how does that how does that work? Because you say there's a it's a SIM card. Yep. Yeah. Uh, but nobody else can contact outside the group the 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 child. The child, exactly right. So, so is it like so? Does have a does it have a, a SIM card with a with a telephone number and has to be connected to the 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 telco i know you guys have been in telco for years yeah. can you explain a little bit about that yeah. to our audience so they really really understand how that works yeah of course so the, the sim card we use um so we, we it works on a vodafone network so vodafone is obviously has mm -hmm. tons of networks around the world it also has the roaming agreements with all of those networks so first off is this thing works anywhere in the world so if you go on holiday and you're on the beach and you want to put the watch on your child it's going to work 
Um, it, it is a SIM card that's in there, but it, it's not one that has a phone number. So you cannot type in a string of numbers or guess a string of numbers and then interact with the child. It's not going to get those spam calls that you get because it's an IoT, IoT SIM card. So it has a, uh, a position on the network so it can be contacted. It doesn't have a phone number. So that means that, and, and that was important because we wanted mm -hmm. to make that kind of extra level of security. Um, so the, the way that it works is within the companion app, um, is where uh, the control is for the caregiver or the parent um, and only they can authorize other people to interact with the child through the app. Um, similarly, um, when a child has a friend that also has a watch and they want to call each other watch to watch, the, the parent of each child has to authorize that connection before that communication can continue. And, and this is a really important one um, for, for Paramount as well to ensure that there's that extra level of security in there and the control is not on the child who may want to speak with everyone in their class, um, is the control is with the, with the parent through the app. So that's why the, the device itself is really important because it's really good fun to play with the kids. The SIM card is really important so for that communication, both via um, calls and messaging. You can also make a little recording of your voice and send it and it plays out on, on, the, on the watch itself. But also the caregiver app is really important because it just makes sure that you've got the, the control as, as the parent of that child. So the pet, when you talk about caregivers, you're talking about parents that have authorized certain to be people to be part of the the the, the ring the ring the ring of security or the ring. Yeah, of it may be a grandparent, it may be an auntie, it may be um, a babysitter. So that all of that control is 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 there for the whoever um, owns that master account. So um, so we can keep it safe. And it's limited to limited number of caregivers, or is it open? No, you, you, you can, yeah, you can keep going with add as many people as you'd like. Yeah. I think as, as we, as we grow the installed base of watches as well, we'll see other kids in, in uh -huh. classes with the same watch who can then contact each other. Um, as long as that's authorized by the parent. Yeah. Um, yes. and we also have the ability to control when or when that does not happen by limiting certain periods of time during the day so if they're at school we don't want the messaging so mm -hmm. we can limit that um so th there's all different ways that um that that control can, can be had by by the parent or the caregiver i mean i'm i mean I'm, i i've been looking at how parents are always you know with with young children you know they are caregiver they are referee they taxi driver now oh. they're mission control how much time does a parent have in the day to be in that mission control position if we have a very hyperactive child oh. who's interacting with all their friends on on, on a smart smart watch yeah well, i think it's, you, you take that one james no i was just saying um so so what we're finding is that um, parents who are buying the watch for their kids are invariably very very busy as you said multiple hats multiple roles and mm -hmm. you know i won't say this is a pacifier because it's far from that but what it is, is a, uh, it is a caregiver in its own right. You know, it keeps the kid entertained, energized, active, um, as opposed to plonking them in front of a TV screen. And, you know, this goes back to parts of the thinking that um, Paramount and Nickelodeon had, which is, you know, how do you um, kind of transcend the, the screen, linear TV viewing or streaming as is more commonplace nowadays with, um, engaging with the characters off screen. Um, and, you know, I think, I think that parents like the fact that this is about imaginative play. There's not the, the I guess, the kind of guilt of I'm plonking the kid in front of the television for half an hour whilst I make myself a brew or take a work call, you know. There's, um, there's karateing going on. There's playing Patrick Says, was a little bit like Simon Says. You know, mm -hmm. there's a lot of fun going on. So, um, it complements the busy lifestyle that the parents have and the multiple roles that they have in a fun way, in an engaging way. So all this content has been effectively created by Nickelodeon and Paramount. 
Um, well, there's 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 actually um, there's Nickelodeon in the mix, which obviously owns all of the IP, um, mm-hmm. you know, with all of the characters. But they've been brought to life for the watch by by a company called Beta Builders, and who effectively they're an incubator, um, which uh, Israeli based uh, incubator, you know, part funded by Paramount. And the guys at Beta have been creating the experiences on the watch. So there's a there's a business called Watching You, which plugs in that expertise of um, the, the tech and the software and the experiential elements with the kind of sales and marketing muscle of a company called Trackimo, which is one of the biggest um, manufacturers of connected GPS devices in the world. So you've got reassurance of Paramount, the brand, the iconic characters, the software know-how of beta, and then the GPS uh, you know, the robust resilience of GPS tracking and the companion apps of Trackimo. So all of that, all of that kind of smorgasbord comes together in, a, in quite a compelling package. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a very, very important for the parents to be able to trust the environment, both on the content side and also on the, on the technology side to ensure that they, that the children aren't being, um, you know, communicated to or communicating out of that tr- that network of trust yes and, and mark maybe you could comment on uh, some of the yeah um you know the ring fence nature the software the fact it's not you, you can't hack it etc cetera, etc cetera, so. yeah it's, it's again it's it's probably the number one area of focus for for Nickelodeon Paramount um, when developing this watch is making sure that that's a safe environment. So um, not only from the software side, um, which is architected in a way and tested multiple times for ability to be hacked and uh, all these other things, um, so that, which passes all of those, um, but also from a hardware perspective. So making sure that we're using the best materials, we're making sure we're going through the most robust uh, accelerated life testing and all of the industry standards to make sure, I mean, this device is on the child's wrist. So you want to make sure you're not making any compromises with some of the, the materials that you use. You can, you know, from the entire supply chain, what you're getting, what you're not getting, and you're making decisions based on um, security of the child. So that that's very much forefront in everything that we do. And, and I think it was part of the, the, the way that we've architected the, the whole app and the, the sim that we choose and everything else to make sure that mm-hmm. it is the most secure environment that you, that you can have. Thank you. And, in, and then moving on to sort of content, of course, you know, um, children are highly enthusiastic, highly engaged. They want more, 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 more. How do you deal with that desire for fear of missing out because their friend has some app or some game or whatever on 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 the platform and suddenly you you know you look at your 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 bill for for the nick watch and you know your your child has spent four hundred dollars on whatever mm-hmm. I, I won't mention names about other applications that children are now in yes. advertising but can you just put a framework in place to show us can that happen or not um so so a couple of things on so firstly there is a subscription that is attached to the yes. Nick watch. So basically you'll pay an amount for hardware and then there is a recurring or an annual or, 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 or two year subscription option. What does that give you? That unlocks all of the functionality, but it also gives um, connectivity, global roaming, but also um, new games, new experiences, which will be progressively added over time in two ways. One is whilst this isn't an, uh, a fitness tracker, it does reward activity. So when you achieve a certain number of step counts, you will get new watch faces. It will unlock new experiences. But also, um, we'll be looking to add in new games, um, new experiences, new apps over time. And that's kind of like on an every other month basis, because we know that kids get bored. Um, So you need to keep them, their interest peaked, and you need to keep, uh, Mm -hmm. you know, delivering new stuff to keep them engaged. So yeah, that's very much part of the roadmap. And then and then there's also the personalization piece where the, the child can use, so there's like tons of different watch faces with all the different characters. So if they want to have a, a turtle yeah. on the back or one of the SpongeBob characters, that's all on there as well. Um, but there's also a, a front facing camera on the device as well where mm-hmm. they can 
take a picture of themselves and then apply filters over the top of themselves to make that all nice and unique. They can send that to their friends. They can send that to their family members. Um, so there, and there's ways of like recording audio. We have, um, we got this, this, uh, some children in the focus groups have, have told us that they've managed to do things we hadn't even thought about that um, they're not they're not they don't cost any money for anyone because there's no way for them to buy anything for this stuff so there's no none mm -hmm. of that like there's no way there's no app store on there there's there's nothing yeah. like that on there um but they they also report uh like when they're wearing the watch and they're doing the exercises they feel that if they've got the watch on they can run quicker like it's helping <laughs> them yeah. achieve more um by giving them, because they've got that incentive or that something that they can try and beat. They say, mm -hmm. it's, it's helped me run quicker. So it's kind of all about that activity um, that we're seeing. And I guess when when you give a child anything, they will use things in in ways that you didn't expect, but because it's all completely secure environment, they, mm -hmm. they can't do anything crazy on there. It's just using the assets that Paramount have authorized um, and just using them in different ways. So how much of that activity is curated um, by the parent or the caregiver in terms of, I take a photograph of myself, at, in, I'm in the playground at school. Does that immediately go to my friends or does it have to be um, authorized by a caregiver? So once, once you've authorized that those two people are okay to communicate, yeah. then that's something that you can, um, that you can do as a, as a child, yeah. Okay, I mean, children will take photographs of everything. As we know. But it, but what they can't do is send it through WhatsApp, post it on social media, etc. It's sent within this walled garden community. Okay. So you could only send it to authorised contacts that sit within your, what we're calling the family, uh, the family kind of community. Mm -hmm. And no, you know, I... you can disable that capability as well, if you're <laughs> really worried. Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, some, you know, new children are highly creative and you'll, you know, they'll be taking photographs of, you know, a cat they just recently put up on a tree. Yep. <laughs> Interesting. Yes. That's an example. <laughs> you, know, I'm, you know, and in terms of the, in, you talked a little bit about incentives, you incentivizing activity, you incentivizing engagement. Okay. Um, and you're at the same time, you are rewarding that activity. How's that reward calculated? Is it what sort of algorithms? You know, are you providing reward points? How does that? Interact? I think at its at its base level, this is about you know, if you achieve a certain number of steps, you get a well done. Here's a new watch face for you. But yeah. in each of the games, and it might be worthwhile me just showing you a small example of what we're talking about here. Yes. Um, you get a well done. Now, does the watch absolutely know that you've walked like a chicken or have you cleaned your room or brushed your teeth? No, probably not. But there's this sense of nice one, dude. Um, again, talking the language of the kids. So I think I'll, I'll just very quickly show you a little bit of what we're talking about. So, so this is the watch itself. And everything yep. is accessed via an orange button on the side. And you get this kind of um, rotary dial interface and yes. you can um, you know, decide what you want to do off that. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into play and um, <clears throat> yet there are loads and loads of games, dozens of different games that you can choose from. I think for the purposes of this morning, um, we will um, we'll, uh, do a bit of, uh, I think karate, um, I'm feeling a little bit uh, far eastern. Um, you'll get a little, um, whoops, a little explanation of what you need to do. So basically, you need to strike down on imaginary objects, and um, you'll be rewarded. And so what we do is here we go. It starts, and it is a kettle. At which point, I'm going to rapidly. There we go. So I'm going to get a well done off that, which is great. Um, hopefully for my caregiver who thinks, wow, that was pretty awesome. Um, but there's another game on this that I think is quite relevant. It's called Patrick Says. Um, and the interesting thing for you and your viewers is I have absolutely no idea what Patrick's going to ask me to do. Um, so this is a little bit like um, Simon Says. 
Um, but instead of that, you've got Patrick the... Um... Okay, and basically it just says, follow what Patrick says. Very, very simple. There can be three instructions. I have no idea what they are. Okay, so Patrick says, three, two, one. Take a deep breath. There we go. So I'm getting cool. I'm getting an acknowledgement that I've done one task. Here comes number two. Waddle like a penguin. So I'm going to waddle like a penguin. Okay. I'm hoping your viewers haven't seen this kind of thing before. And I get another well done. Patrick says the third one, three, two, one. Move in slow motion. There you go. So that's it. So I'm getting three acknowledgements that I've done three cool things. Um, so the kid, he's getting a virtual back pat, or he or she is getting a virtual pat on the back saying, well done, nice one. So that, all those movements are picked up by the, the, the watch and are able to determine whether you're moving fast, slow, jumping up and down, spinning around. Uh, to some it knows that you're doing something. Does it know exactly what you're doing and the velocity of how high you're jumping? Oh, okay. yeah. There is a time allowance. So the idea is that the, the, because what, what Paramount were very keen on doing is not, not scolding the child for not moving fast enough mm -hmm. or for setting goals that were going to lead to issues about, you know, am I active enough? <laughs> or, or yes, things yes. like that. I mean, I mean, if I if I jump, if I if I if I'm not active enough, do if I jump out the window, I will fall, you know, a, a <laughs> lot further, and I would therefore earn more earn more rewards. Yeah, there's none of that. <laughs> there's none of that. It's, just, it's, it's fun extreme. at the end of the day. It's I could be Spider Man or something like that. You know, jump no, out. We, of don't want, we, we don't want anyone jumping out the window. That's exactly. No, there's no concepts exactly. along those lines. It's fun at the end of the day. Yes. This is about fun. And, yeah. um, you know, it, it's quite easy to get caught up on, oh, well, you know, what are the kind of objectives that you're going to set for the kid? It's about fun. And really what we want to do is encourage that active, imaginative play, mm -hmm. um, the silliness, um, rather than being lost in, um, you know, potentially kind of violent or, um, you know, activities that aren't um, conducive to positive development. Yes. So the Paramount and Nickelodeon content, which obviously you mentioned one, which is SpongeBob SquarePants. Yes. Yes. Um, does the child have the ability to watch any of that content through the watch? There's no video content apart from short form content that's part of the games, mm -hmm. and experiences, which are very small vignettes. Um, but this isn't about watching video on your watch. Again, it goes back to the fact that this is about imaginative play. It's, mm -hmm. about, um, it's not about watching films on your wrist. Yes. This is really interesting. So it basically, it, and it will link back to the parent's account, and parent's account will have access to Nickelodeon, obviously through the various channels that are available. And then they can actually, I mean, because it's obvious that it's an upsell to, from the child to Nickelodeon. And um, we kind of feel as though it's complementary to, yeah. uh, to the Nickelodeon content. So, you know, there are YouTube channels, there are streaming mm -hmm. channels, you can watch it on with your pay TV provider, etc. So this is, a, this is an extension of that. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we are doing in our kind of commercial conversations is, is talking to those kinds of providers about, you know, is there an opportunity to do kind of, you know, bundling, et cetera. But it's early stages. I mean, some of the things that you talked about and your experiences before have been involved in health and wellness. Apart from yeah. children being active, is there any other content in there that encourages people, children, to drink water? <laughs> No, there is not. There is not that kind of content. It is okay. very much rooted in fun, fun, and yeah. imaginative play, and that's that's the focus. Uh, again, that's something that's been uh, driven off the back of focus groups and research with parents and kids alike. Yes. And what has been the response of the parents? So the parents that we've um, <laughs> so a couple of things. One is um, we commissioned some research um, in the UK. 
um, about parents' fears about technology and internet, et cetera. And one of the things that um, we uncovered is that under the age of 10, 50% of parents have lost their kids about five times. I don't even want to go into the anxiety or issues that are surrounding how one feels when that happens. Um, and we worked with a lady called Helen Flanagan, who uh, spent a little bit of time in, um, in, in uh, the jungle on I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here, but is also, you know, a, a kind of a soap star in her own right. But she has three kids and her greatest fear is losing her children. And we gave them Nick watches to see how she could integrate that into her life and said it just gives you total peace of mind. Firstly, that they're having fun, but very importantly, you know where they are. And, you know, knowing where they are and knowing that they can be contactable is something that we've baked into the, the experience mm-hmm. itself. So <clears throat> if the battery falls below a certain level, the games are disabled so that you know where the child is and they can contact you because that's very, very important. Mm. So <clears throat> parents love it. The kids seem to love it. Um, and um, the conversations that we're having with commercial partners have also been really encouraging, both UK, Ireland, and elsewhere. And in, Mark, in terms of the technology, um, if I have the, I, I, I'm, a, I'm a, one of the caregivers, and I want to communicate with the child, what's the channel of communication or channels of communication? See, so one way, two way. How does that work? Yeah. So you ju- you just uh, download the app. And then you you get authorized as part of that kind of inner mm-hmm. circle that's allowed to communicate there. Um, and then the they they can make phone calls to each other. So if 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 the child's staying with their grandparent and they want to call them directly from the watch, they just pick up granddad and <coughs> push the yeah. button, and then it'll make a direct uh, connection through the app. So that it'll be a- app to phone connection. If they want to just record a quick message to say where they are, again, that's audio from the watch to the app of the, on the phone. Um, mm-hmm. If they wanted to send them a picture message or a- anything they want, or just type away something, um, one of the kind of preloaded messages that are on the watch, or if the caregiver wanted to message something to the child, it's all done through the uh, Nick Watch app to the watch. So it's it's all within that environment. So there's no way for them to send them a text message or like send a WhatsApp message or anything like that. that that's, not, that's not there. It, they, that's why they, they kind of bind together as one closed environment for security. Mm-hmm. And it does, I mean, and does the child have to be on the same telco network as the, the, where the, the master app is or the parent or the grandparent? No, no, it, it works. In a sense, it works the same as um, uh, calling any any number, but it's not a number. It's uh, once you've established the ability to, it kind of white labels that connection to say this person can contact this. Um, it's kind of it's an IoT sim- device. It's exactly, an IoT it's device. a similar to like an IoT. To, it's a it's an IoT sim that's in there, and it works like an IoT device. So as long as you know that endpoint's address, you can interact <clears throat> with it through through data. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's exactly the same, but with a, a new use case, which was for, for a kids' watch. Yes, and in terms of the, the you know the work that you've been doing, I know you you in the UK, you you looking at the the, the UK demographic, uh, UK Ireland, and then of course, um, obviously the US is also a really really big market. This is all at the moment. It seems like because the content is Nickelodeon, it's very Anglo us based but what about the experiences of not you know asia and africa and things like that how what's the the way in which yeah uh, the breadth mm-hmm. yeah, the breadth yeah yeah so so yeah so um so focus so we we obviously launched first uk and ireland we'll be launching soon in spain we're, and then we'll be expanding through europe uh, we're also having conversations uh, in the, the US, um, North America, uh, around uh, there as well, because that's obviously a kind of a key market with, with Paramount as well. Um, we we probably won't do too much in Asia, um, more to the fact that the Paramount content is not as well established in that market. So when we're looking at 
which markets to to go and work through we look at obviously the demographic of the users we look at the the brand resonance of the nickelodeon characters and then obviously have the conversations with the channel partners so certainly we expect to see it um disseminate through europe as we kind of build more units frankly we can't build enough to do all of those yet but as soon as we can we we build more and more um we'll expand through there and then move to to uh, north america so like mm -hmm. us mexico and then <clears throat> the, um, south america so certainly for the next um year or so that's going to be our focus and then there obviously there are markets within africa that that do have good um coverage so down in south africa has got yeah um uh, good uh good awareness of or the nickelodeon characters so that's certainly uh one area that we'll look to to move into next year as well i mean having I mean, you know, having traveled in africa everybody has a mobile device and yes a large proportion of the population is are, are close to i mean i've been in the middle of you know the serengeti and i still have a g a 3g signal so because of the you know, nature of the, 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 the land how much of the nickelodeon or the 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 the, the watchers content is educational it's a good question i'm trying to think if i can give a percentage of it mm. um there's there, there's it's it's more in enjoyment um yeah. the educational piece will probably go the the one that stands out to mind is the one where you have to create a story so um yeah. what the child's given is there you go into story mode and the child's given three words mm -hmm. and from those three words they have to make a short story up so it's looking at how can you um use again it's based on imagination but yeah. by by association it's also educational so there it's it's more on movement and activity based has been the main focus but then you have got those educational pieces like that that kind of oh i have to create a story we've got um there's, there's other games in there where um again more more on the fun and activity where you can have a little band between your friends so you can have somebody who's the guitar player somebody who's the drummer and uh, somebody who plays on the keyboards and they all have to do the activity for that um musical instrument so it's kind of yeah. sort of it's kind of in a way introducing them to playing musical instruments and into music and educating them around that so the guitarist has to do this for the sound to come out because they have to make the right movement with the accelerometer on the wrist to get the guitar sound to come out and the drummer has to do that otherwise the drums don't come out so mm -hmm. it's again it's kind of introducing to um the music as well i mean because most children are quite ambidextrous so does the watch um enable engagement whether you like right-handed or left-handed yeah, yeah. You, you decide as part of the setup is it left or right wrist yeah and he just you just ah. ro rotate it one way or another so yeah. if you're on the left side it just rotates the other way and then the ui flips 180 degrees mm -hmm. so you've gone there so if you want it on right or left you just say at the beginning which wrist are you wearing this on and then it pre-configures it all for you and a child can even change that because you know what they are like they don't yeah. yeah yeah change or they can buy two <laughs> <laughs> and the and the i mean how many i mean are you able to tell us about the the, the engagement now the take up and the growth of this i know you've mentioned before you know, you can't you, you can't make enough of them at this present time so what what do those numbers look like yeah um no really good so we've got um so we've had our that when we launched we're on our d2c channel which is nickwatch.com so if anyone <laughs> Yeah. Once again, check this out. They want to go and explore a little bit more what the game's about, understand everything. So go mm -hmm. to nickwatch.com. So all of the units that we've produced so far all go through that channel. Um, because as we ramp up the production, um, mm -hmm. that's that's where that one's gone. Um, within the next two to three weeks, we're starting to then engage more with uh re electronics yeah. retailers, toy uh, toy store retailers, and these. Uh, other um, uh, partners because we now have the capability to ramp up to the you know multiple tens of thousands of units to be able to fulfill all those channels and we're very conscious not to start too early with that and then let customers down because they we run out of stock um mm -hmm. so all of that's 
um, now in in Europe and ready for the the launch. So we'll be launching um, in. Uh, we're sitting here doing this podcast on yeah beginning of July. So by by the end of the July in Ireland, by the beginning yeah. of August uh, in the UK, and then we'll roll that out through the year with multiple channel partners. We're moving into Spain uh, in September time. Um, so it's all based on just how many we can produce and then making sure that we fulfill all those channels in time. So, yeah, your, your, all your viewers will be able to go onto their favorite electronics retailer or toy store, and then they can, they can find a way to buy it through them. So if they prefer it to buy it through one of those retailers, then it'll be available as well. Mm-hmm. Can they buy it directly from the nickwatch.com website? Yeah, yeah exactly. The nickwatch.com website allows the um the buyer to then pick and choose their subscription plan to whatever suits them so uh, obviously we need the sim card in there but it's unlimited data sim card free global roaming um Mm. all of that stuff included all of the parent app the caregiver app all the new games that are coming in um the ability to track uh, location in real time and see where they've been as well that's all included and then depending on the preference we've got the most um the most popular um package is to buy a one year up front because it just saves money for for the user yeah. um there's the most flexible one which you just pay month to month just cancel at any time um so there's no like fixed two-year sim contract that you would get for some mobile operators we give the flexibility for that or we got the the cheapest one which is a two-year package um again saves even more money so um yeah right now yeah go to nickwatch.com but literally within the next few weeks it's it's going to all the big retailers so yeah we're super excited about that and multiple languages yeah, yeah, all yep. the languages supported in the in the UI. Um, so we obviously we're launching in Spanish, in Spanish, and then we've got German in there, and French, Italian, and and all the others. So yeah, yeah, and we'll keep adding more languages as we roll out to more countries through the year. It's really really exciting evolution and development for which I you know I I, I find this fascinating that there's all there have been. Um, technologies out there which are trying to track where your kids are all the time or what content your children are are are, are, are actually accessing and I think this is a, a a really novel way in which it satisfies all stakeholders in this even yeah. the children <laughs> yeah no it, it completely does I mean and, and James and I we've worked we've worked in the mobile industry for 20 years right? I mean we've yeah. worked for all, all the all the big names and this this certainly uh, within the mobile space there's kind of been this inertia where the, the technology's got to so far and then the screen's the same size the camera's a little yeah. bit better you might get another two minutes of battery life out for each evolution and what really interested i think i can speak to james as well on this one but interested us both is this is like brand new new setting a new category up the technology's ready we've got all of the the content and the characters from nickelodeon it's just really exciting um, and then being able to then deliver this uh, solution for parents which gives them peace of mind i mean it's 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 human nature to want to be able to protect your children mm-hmm. and in today's day and age you you have the the physical element of the protection but then you have the psychological element you have the digital element there are many more ways that that child can be influenced uh, when you're not with them so just having that, egg, I mean, we're not going to solve the world with this with this watch, but what we do give is a really robust and considered execution of something which is fun for the child, peace of mind for the caregiver, um, and at a, like a really affordable price. I mean, if you look at it compared to some of the other watches out there, what one of the kind of fundamental um uh sort of brand identities for for trackmo is 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 connecting the world in the most affordable way yeah. so being able to deliver that with uh as as low a ticket price as possible um is also really important this is very exciting but what made um nickelodeon choose the uk market for this because nickelodeon tends to from my experience to uh-huh. be very us centric um it's it's more um <laughs> you're right nick uh, us is the biggest by far the biggest market yeah. can we make enough watches to sell that many <laughs> in the us market right now no will we be able to next year yes yeah. so it's more kind of it's a function of all of those components of like you when you when you kind of put it all in the mix 
um, it's just it's just step by step. We have to we have to build this category. We have to build um, more supply coming out. I mean, every conversation we have with channel partners is finally this is the kids watch that excites us. When can we have it? Um, in terms of integrating with mobile operators. Uh, obviously if we launch on a mobile operator which is not vodafone they want us to put their sim cards in their e-sim in so these are all the conversations we're having now to say yes yeah, certainly operator x will just do same watch but we'll put your e-sim you can sell it to your customers and gives them another way to interact and give another uh, solution for their um, install base as well so um this this the, frankly so much opportunity um even just in the uk if I, if i'm honest that um, we need to fulfill fill that in a way that doesn't let down our customers and, and delights the consumers. And then we build by build and, and move into the US uh, when we're ready. So if I'm a parent or caregiver and I am I have the app on my smartphone connected mm -hmm. to, uh, to the, to the, 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 the Nick watch and I'm on, say, the, whatever network I'm on, the package that I've bought for that particular watch 200, 200 euros or whatever it is. Um, um, does that include the cost of the data that I have between myself and the IoT device? Now that would be part of your own um, yeah. data package. And if you're on Wi-Fi, for instance, then it wouldn't use it at all. So if you're at home and you connect on the Wi-Fi network, it will send it through Wi-Fi. So um, it's more when you're out and about. But the amount of data that we send between devices is tiny. I mean, yeah. we're there, there's not like these big kind of streaming Netflix and stuff like that. No. It's a very small message that mm -hmm. gets sent back and forth. So it, yeah. even for the caregiver, I mean, I would be amazed if there was any bill shock for the care, for the caregiver with the amount of data that we're sending. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm a little bit of a blue sky here. Right? At the moment, we're moving out of Web two into Web three. We're talking about augmented reality, virtual reality. What are the ways in which Nick Watch would would evolve to include any AR or, or you know augmented reality or mm -hmm. virtual reality or a um, mixed reality experience? Yeah, so I mean, the, the way we do it now is, is it's, a, it's a basic way of doing it. It's, it's overlaying the, the garments or, the, or the, the look of the character overlaid on the, on the user. So if you take a selfie and I, today I want to be a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle. So I'm going to yeah. put the strip across my eyes and that's going to be that's going to be me for the day so that's the kind of way that we can merge the characters with the <clears throat> with the real life um going forwards i think the only limitation frankly is going to be the the battery life because if you're going to do these kind of high powered mm -hmm. uh th things that you mentioned they're, they're all going to have a impact on the battery life and and certainly when when we're looking at trade-off of features to battery it's always something in mind is like and james mentioned it you're going to need to contact the child in an emergency so you don't, you don't want them doing everything funky and then within an hour later they've done all this amazing augmented reality and then they can't be contacted so i think that's probably going to be the main limitation i don't think it's more i don't think it's a kind of a software limitation it's more just on a on a use case really because the I mean, a child's wrist is a child's wrist. That's, it's not the size is not going to change in the next three to four years. Um, so we need to make sure that it's a, it's a product that when you put it on the wrist, it's not like chunky up here. I mean, I think James showed it earlier. It's really slim profile and fits perfectly on the, on on a child's wrist. So and it's that's the main consideration. It is. It's I, hard. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the screen that we use it, it's a really good screen. I mean, it, not only does it look good, but then the, the durability on there, it's all um, IP rated. So if they do get it wet or, or you know, and take a brief dip in the in a lake, then it's going to be OK as well. So it also has That's to waterproof be... as well. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Um, here, okay. here's, here's a little bit of what Mark was just telling you. So I've just <laughs> overlaid the very fetching um, you know, something for a character of SpongeBob uh, on top of my face. So that's basically how you can do it. And oh, sorry, there's, there's, you know, I could, I could add a bandana or something from Absolutely. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. So it's just a bit. It's fun. It's fun. That's what it's all about. Well, it's, I, I must admit, this has been a really, really fun time and a really fun interview. 
you know, Mark and James, you've been very entertaining. <laughs> I hope <laughs> our audience is just as well entertained as all of us. And I really, really would like if you could send through some very um, some content to us. Yes, uh, we would love to be able to augment the, the the this wonderful hour we've spent together with some great content. And I personally um, would be very much following the evolution and developments of uh, of uh, of uh, of Nick Watch. I'm not a parent, but I'm lots of God. <laughs> no children <laughs> you know i mean a lot of them are older than than, than standard demographic but i you know close some of them are pretty close to having children on their own so that's going to be very interesting and uh, so thank you very much indeed for this very engaging time mark and james and nick watch thank no you problem. you're very welcome thanks for inviting us thank you for viewing and engaging in today's podcast with nickwatch.com if you're interested in knowing more about citiesabc.com with openbusinesscouncil.org and fashionabc.org, do go to our platforms, as well as you can also find me on social media and direct message me, Hilton Super on Twitter, LinkedIn, and Instagram. And do go to the other interviews we have done on YouTube. And don't forget to like and comment. Thank you very much for your time and engaging with us with this interview on Cities ABC.